In the late 1970s, on a quiet street in France, a man stepped out into the road only to be struck by a speeding car, which raced away, the driver vanishing without a trace. Dr. Marcel Pages died there on the street, and with him, his dreams of an invention he believed could defy gravity itself. His death was as mysterious as the device he spent decades developing, a machine that promised to lift humanity beyond the stars. This is the story of Marcel Pages, a man whose bold vision challenged the laws of physics and left a legacy shrouded in intrigue. 1959. The world is gripped by the space race. The first probe passes the moon. Satellites orbit Earth. Humanity dreams of conquering the cosmos. At the International Congress of Satellites and Missiles, a little-known inventor steps into the spotlight. Marcel Pages, a Frenchman with a bold vision, declares that gravity is not what we think it is. He claimed gravity is not caused by the attraction of the Earth, but is caused by the repulsion of the cosmos. He calls it a cosmic repulsion, a force that can be tamed with the right technology. For over 15 years, Pages had been developing a device he claimed could reduce an object's weight, make it levitate, or even propel it through space at speeds faster than light. His ideas were radical, clashing with Einstein's theory of relativity and the scientific consensus of the time. Pages wasn't just another dreamer. He had a patent to back his claims. Filed in 1960, French patent number 1,253,902 titled Engine for Cosmic Flight described a machine unlike anything the world had seen. Shaped like a lenticular flying saucer, the device featured a central sphere and a toroidal chamber where an electron beam would rotate at staggering speeds, up to 97% of the speed of light, or 291,000 kilometers per second. This beam, guided by a magnetic field, was said to create a hole in what Pages called cosmic energy, a mysterious force he believed permeated all of space. The result? Degravitation, the ability to counteract gravity itself. But what was this cosmic energy? Pages had a theory, one that sounds more like science fiction than science. He proposed that space is filled with a graviton gas, tiny packets of gravitational energy that push objects toward Earth. By manipulating this gas with his device, Pages believed he could neutralize gravity's pull. He even suggested that his machine could harness energy 10,000 billion times more powerful than nuclear fusion, a claim that left scientists both intrigued and skeptical. To Pages, gravity wasn't a fundamental force, but a phenomenon that could be engineered, controlled, and overcome. The heart of Pages' device was its electron beam, accelerated to near light speeds within a 4,000 Gauss magnetic field. According to his patent, a 3,000 ampere current would power this process, enabling the device to lift a 1,000 kilogram mass. Once activated, the machine required no further energy to maintain its anti-gravity effect, much like a balloon stays aloft once filled with helium. Pages envisioned a future where his technology would power spacecraft, allowing humanity to travel beyond the stars free from the shackles of gravity and inertia. To test his ideas, Pages conducted experiments, some dating back to the 1920s. In one setup, he used two 14-centimeter mica discs coated with metal foil, charged to 200,000 volts by a Wimshurst generator. When placed on a balanced beam, the discs reportedly lost five grams of weight, an effect that vanished after two minutes. In another test, a single disc, charged to 300,000 volts and rotated, lifted off its support. Pages even conducted experiments in a vacuum using a 40-liter capacitor and claimed consistent results, a small but measurable reduction in weight. These findings, he argued, proved that his device could manipulate gravity. Across the Atlantic, the U.S. Air Force was equally captivated by the possibilities of gravity-based propulsion systems. At Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Home to UFO Intelligence Investigation Project Blue Book, the Aeronautical Research Laboratories launched intense programs to explore gravity control. From 1956, under physicist Joshua Goldberg, the General Physics Laboratory coordinated research into gravitational and unified field theories. Aerospace giants like Bell and Boeing joined the quest, driven by the promise of revolutionary propulsion. By the early 1970s, however, the Air Force's focus shifted. Research publications related to gravity control propulsion, which had been active through the late 1960s, ceased around 1974 without retractions or announcements of success. Declassified documents and historical analyses indicate that experiments, 
often exploring high-voltage electrostatic systems or theoretical gravitational shielding, produced negligible or inconclusive results. Effects initially attributed to gravity manipulation, like those in Thomas Townsend Brown's work, were frequently explained by conventional phenomena, such as ionic wind and devices like the ionocraft. No operational gravity propulsion systems emerged, and the programs quietly dissolved. The scientific community was also unconvinced by Paget's theories. His experiments, while intriguing, were small in scale, and his results were never independently verified. A 5-gram weight loss, though measurable, was a far cry from lifting a 1,000-kilogram spacecraft. Critics pointed out that his theories lacked a rigorous mathematical foundation and contradicted well-established principles like general relativity. The idea of a graviton gas, while imaginative, had no empirical support. And the notion of superluminal speeds, faster than light, seemed to defy the very fabric of physics. Despite the skepticism, Paget's work captured the imagination of those drawn to the fringes of science. His device, with its flying saucer shape, tapped into the UFO craze of the 1950s, a time when stories of extraterrestrial visitors filled the headlines. But Pages's story took a tragic turn. After years of advocating for his invention, he met an untimely end, struck by a car whose driver was never identified. The suspicious circumstances fueled conspiracy theories, with some claiming his work was silenced by powerful forces. Whether true or not, his death marked the end of his active research, leaving behind a legacy of unanswered questions. Today, Marcel Paget's anti-gravity device is a footnote in the history of unconventional science, but in the halls of mainstream science, his work is largely dismissed. No peer-reviewed studies have validated his claims, and no prototypes of his device have surfaced. The laws of physics, as we understand them, offer no support for electromagnetic anti-gravity. General relativity, tested and confirmed countless times, remains the gold standard for explaining gravity's behavior. Yet, there's something compelling about Pages's audacity. In an era when humanity was just beginning to explore space, he dared to imagine a world where gravity could be tamed. His experiments, however limited, reflect a relentless curiosity, a willingness to challenge the status quo. The mid-20th century was a time of bold ideas, from nuclear power to the moon landing, and Pages's vision was part of that zeitgeist. Even if his device never left the ground, it inspired others to dream of what might be possible. Marcel Pages's anti-gravity device is a reminder that science thrives on both rigor and imagination. While his ideas may not hold up under scrutiny, they challenge us to question what we believe is possible. Could there be undiscovered principles waiting to be uncovered? Could gravity one day be manipulated in ways we can't yet fathom? For now, Paget's device remains a tantalizing what-if, a spark of wonder in a world bound by gravity's pull. As we continue to explore the universe, perhaps his story will inspire future innovators to reach for the stars.